Creating unique gifts is one of the main reasons many of us sew. If your sewing gift list includes a little girl, perhaps a little girl who loves dolls, this program is for you. Welcome back, Joan Hines, who is a nationally known doll clothes designer, who's with us again. Joan, last time you introduced us into doll clothes making now, we're going to sew doll clothes for all seasons. Yes, thank you, Nancy. It's great to be back here again. And today we'll begin with spring and summer fashions. Hiking shorts and a hoodie are just right for playtime or a walk in the woods. We'll start by showing you sewing tips that make doll clothes stitching a breeze. Doll Fashion Studio, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Sewing doll clothes is about as easy of sewing as you can get, and Joan has designed the clothes so that they're opened in the back, and all the construction, for the most part, is flat, rather than this hoodie being a pullover, as most real hoodies are for the doll clothes. It just opens up with hook and loop tape in the back and makes it easy for the little person to play with the doll, and also, most importantly for us, to do the sewing. Now, Joan, when you design patterns for dolls, you just simply, after you design them, you just trace them on recycled paper. That's right. That's how I create, and I have my <laughs> little notes on there, so I remember what I'm doing. Now, if you're going to be using doll patterns over and over again, you may want to consider tracing them on a Templar or template like quilting uh, material for templates, and then you could either pin the paper tissues or trace the designs right on your fabric. And nice thing about doll clothes, doesn't take a lot of fabric. That's right. Flat construction is what we talked about and that means not have sewing as few circles as possible. One of the first steps you're going to do is stitch the shoulder seams together and then set the sleeve in flat. It has ribbing so to make it easy, Joan's going to show you how to put the ribbing on and this doesn't take a lot of effort. No, I simply have this sleeve cut here and then I have a piece of ribbing and the measurements are given for you and you can see that it is a little bit longer or a little bit shorter than the sleeve itself. And I'll put a pin at the end so it's stretched across. And then I simply put it under the presser foot and most doll sewing is one quarter inch seams, so I have that already set up on my machine, and then I will begin to sew it. And you just make sure that it goes all the way to the end. And Joan, you just change the needle position to make it a fourth of an inch. Correct. So it can be surged or it can be stitched as we have done or Joan has done with a straight seam, and then what I've been doing is to pin the sleeve into the armhole. Because the sleeve curves one way and the armhole curves the other way, you're always sewing with the outer curve toward the feed dogs, and that will allow the sleeve to ease in, ease into the fabric. So it's all flat, but now you can start to sew it together. And this is the premise for all of the doll clothes. So you can see that the um, sweatshirt here is flat with the sleeve set in and the ribbing attached. And then all I need to do is to fold it so that I have the edges of the sleeve together and put a pin in the end. And then I'll stick another one in just below the armhole hole seam here. Good thing about fleece and knits, you really don't have to do a lot of pressing. That's right. And then I can put this under the presser foot again. And then I can just stitch the, the seam. And I like to start from the um, sleeve end because then you can make sure that they're set up properly and that they will 
come out even when you're finished sewing. And it kind of helps sometimes just to back stitch a little bit. Yes, definitely. With little children playing with these, you want to make sure that the seams are secure. Okay, so then you can turn the sweatshirt, the hoodie inside out. And if we look at our finished doll, you can see that here's the seam. The seam that you just have the raw edges, it's fine, just reinforce it. And then you can add the ribbing along the lower edge. We recommend that you seam the edges here, the short edges together, and you turn it right side out, and then you just sew that along the bottom. The hook and loop tape is put on after the hood is attached, really easy to put on, just a lot of flat sewing. And within a very short period of time, you will created your first doll clothes. A little trim can go a long way when it comes to stitching doll clothes. The sunny day sundress sports a touch of rickrack, which serves as a focal point. The design may look complicated to sew, but it's certainly not. Let's take a close-up look at our doll and her fancy dress. And gathering, rickrack are all part of this design. Again, easy closures will all be part of, Joan, your, your mantra here to keep it easy to, for little girls to have playtime. Right, right. Now the gathering, we're going to show several ways to gather throughout this two-part series, but you're going to start by showing one way. Yes, and this is a fusible gathering tape that's applied to the skirt. And uh, the skirt needs to be cut a uh, certain width and a certain length, and this I believe is 36 inches long. And you can trim the skirt in whatever manner you like. I chose rickrack, it matched the fabric so well. And what I did is I hemmed all three sides of the skirt, leaving the top open, and then I attached the rickrack just by placing it right underneath the finished edge here and top stitching again. Yeah, just a simple, simple stitch. Right, right. And I will show you now the, the gathering tape. And this is a tape with blue stitching, and then there's white underneath, and the white is the fusible part of it, so mm -hmm. that part goes down on your fabric. And you can see here that I will press it onto the edge. And I like to take it so that it extends a little bit over the end so that I can pull mm -hmm. some, some threads. And then I just simply use my iron to press it on. And I would press this oops, the whole width of, sure. the, of the skirt. Now I can show you what it looks like once it's pressed on. And you can see that there's a knot tied here at this end so the gathering threads don't pull out. And then I've used a pin to pull these loose so that I have something to hold on to. And then I just simply start pulling these threads. <laughs> Perfect for doll clothes. Couldn't be simpler. Mm -hmm. So you'll get your skirt ready and now I'll show you how to prepare the top. Now, Joan, we line the pieces. Yes, and you'd think lining would be very difficult, but it makes it so much easier than trying to use facings for doll clothes. So the front piece is curved, the back piece is the str more angular piece, and the side seams are sewn for both the, face the outer and the facing. And before putting this together, we made little straps, and they are pinned to the you'll find in the pattern directions, but you can see another way of adding rickrack, just top stitching it onto the strap to make it look a little bit more interesting. And you pin it to the inside and then sandwich the outer bodice and the lining section. Now these little pieces, you, they're no longer flat because of the straps, but... Oh, right, the strap is, is shorter than to, mm -hmm. to lay flat on so it. So you pin the two together so that they match. And on this sample, we have the curve or the armhole stitched. And we need to sew it around the top and the side. And rather than pivoting at the corners, Joan likes to use the wrap corner techniques that I've used so often on TV. And that is at this corner to fold the fabric right at that stitching line and then pin the facing to or the seam allowance to the edge and then sew the edge right starting at the fold. And you do that at every corner. 
when that's sewn like that, it looks a little weird because here are the corners, but they have those funny folds. Now, Joan, we've sewn everything and left the bottom open, but the magic of this is that when you turn this right side out, even on these little pieces. Yes, yeah, so you can just pop that uh, corner and it'll be nice and sharp. And that's probably the most difficult part is, yeah. is, is turning it to the right so side. So you can look at that nice sharp corner. Now this hasn't been pressed, but then you'd simply overlap the two mm -hmm. pieces by an inch and a half, I believe the instructions yep. say. Yes, that's correct. And then you can attach the skirt in this flat manner so that the skirt is attached to this area. And I think you can figure that out, how that's done. But we are just showing you portions of how the pieces go together, some of the main sewing techniques. So it's gathered, trimmed, and then the opening just has the hook and loop tape, and you have the sunny day dress. Your little girl will love to play dress up with her doll, especially when the doll's wardrobe is filled with sewn with love options. The spring break top and capris are sewn with a very easy way. Even though the pieces are little, the sewing will be, again, flat construction. When we look at this three-piece outfit, you'll see that the top resembles a little bit what we did just a few minutes ago. Yes, there's a gathered skirt, uh, and it's just a gathered piece of fabric on the edge of the top with a simple bodice. And again, a line bodice, and it's easier Correct. to sew. Mm -hmm. But the pants, whether you're making capris, shorts, or pants, right. they're all done, again, in the flat way. Now, Joan, you have the pattern piece is kind of hard to tell which is the top and bottom. Right, so you have to be sure you, can, you remember once you cut out the fabric. And for each leg, you're going to sew the long side seams together. And then this represents one of them, and then you hem it first. Right, I decided to decorate these pants with the same fabric as the top so that I cut a cuff and I pressed it, and then I stitched it to the wrong side mm -hmm. of the pants and then you press the cuff over to the right side. And you may want to put a pin or two at the hemline to hold the cuff into place. Right, right. So the next step then is to sew the center front seam, which you can see has been done here. And then we need to finish the top. And we're gonna make these elastic waist so there is a casing stitched here. And it's simply... Just um, stitched really close to the edge. Right, right. You wanna make sure you have enough room. And then you need to put elastic in your casing, and I have a bodkin here, and you want to make sure you have a really good tail on your elastic, and you start inserting, and we'll get it all the way through, and then I can pull it at this end. This takes a little time to maneuver that end. Right, once you get through the elastic. There we go. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now, now we go. we're making some progress. And this will start coming through. And I don't know why it's something stuck here. Sometimes it gets a little challenged at the corners. That's right. And you're going to pin the elastic at one end and... Right, once this comes all the way through... You I'm, know, so it happens like this at home. Too, there you it? go. It needs a little encouragement. You're going to hold that in so we don't... Don't pull this, it all the this way This is through. how to use elastic with four hands. There you go. Okay, so you want to make sure you don't let this go through and you would put a pin here to hold it. And pin the other end. And then when this comes through, you would pin the other end. Then sew the center back seam. And after on these little pants, I'm just going to show you the center back seam would be sewn. And the very last seam, I like the way you put these together. Right. The, the, you just do the inner leg seam, and you do it in one fell swoop. So it would start at, the, at each cuff and go around the edge. And be sure to reinforce the seams at this edge. Right, right. Yeah. You want to make sure you can play with them. Now, here's our little accessory. Joan likes to design accessories as well as the clothes, and you can see that the bag is just made with felt, 
and two pieces of felt, a little trim, and some hand stitching. And you know, this is like sitting and watching a commercial break. <laughs> you can have it done in just a short time. And what a fun accessory to add to the doll fashion studio wardrobe. Most little girls love to jump in rain puddles, so why not make a trendy doll-sized raincoat so her doll can be part of her fun? Accented with ruffles and snaps, we'll show you how easy it is to create doll clothes with style. This technique, Joan, kind of combines all of the things we've been showing today. Right, it's, it's a garment made from laminated cotton, so even mm -hmm. your doll can have waterproof fabric. <laughs> Just have to remember not to press it on that uh, uh -huh. side so that it would melt, but it does have the flat construction with lining. And touches of ruffles and snaps. Mm -hmm. And the sewing, flat construction as we've been emphasizing, but for the raglan style, it's a little bit different. Right, the pieces look a little unusual, but you have two fronts, two sleeves and a back and you just have to remember to seam it right here at the shoulders there's no curve so it's very easy with mm -hmm. this fabric when we flip it over you'll see the trim for the sleeves has been added and it's kind of the reverse of what we did with the cuffs right you have a length of fabric and it is uh, probably double the width of, of your sleeve and then you would simply um, gather it mm -hmm. and attach it to the edge of the cuff. And we gathered it with the sewing machine because this is a double layer of fabric. The hood also has a little ruffle. Right, this one is inserted and you have your lining attached already and it's basted together. And then I'm simply going to um, pin the hood to the neckline and the center of the hood would match up with the center back of the garment and then you would continue to pin it it would be gathered slightly and then it's pinned around the edge and now you're ready to attach the lining so the hood would be stitched around the neckline if you Correct. have one more pin we'll just sn sneak I that into do. place okay so they get the idea mm -hmm. and then we put the top crust on the pie crust here yes, this absolutely. is kind this of like a Reminds me of a pie crust for some reason. And here's the lining, same pieces mm -hmm. as the coat itself. And now you're going to stitch around all the edges except for the underarm seam, which are those edges right here. And it's an unusual looking pattern piece right now. But let me just show you all the stitching that has been accomplished. First of all, you sew the hems. You sew them together fourth of an inch seam and notice we did a little trimming with a pinking shears or a pinking blade that will give rid of some of the excess fabric in this area here's the underarm seam and the underarm seam of the sleeve so those are unstitched the sleeve has been stitched and trimmed we go again to the hem of the front is stitched then comes the big long seam the center front around the neckline and then to the center front. And now, Joan, we just do the magic of turning it. Turning it all to the right side. And this takes, you keep turning until you get all the right sides out. Yes, yes. And it takes. It, it's a little cumbersome. Yeah, it, 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 it's kind of like birthing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. We're giving birth to this wrinkle today. <laughs> so here we go. Coming, we're, we're getting closer, you'll see. And you could do some pressing and getting those corners sharp through this area. And I'll just shake it out. Here's the lining, the sleeve, the front, and the hood. Yeah, it's really kind of magical when, how this is turned right side out. The trimming with the pinking shears does help a tremendous amount. Now, no pressing has been done here, but I think you get the concept. The underarm seam is then sewn. And then we'd sew this together just like we did with, in our first project of the day, sewing the underarm seam of that hoodie. Yes. When that's sewn, just with a zigzag, straight stitch, and, or I should say a serger, here's your coat that's been pressed, here's that seam. And for the little girls, it can be raw edge in there, but what a fast way and really an adorable doll clothes.
Today's Nancy's Corner guest is a quilting sleuth who does much of her research at the Library of Congress. Recently, she uncovered the fascinating story of Estella Weaver Nukes, an Indiana quilt maker who gave a quilt to the President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, in 1930. Please welcome back Kyra Hicks, who joins us via Skype. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate you inviting me to be on the show again. About two years ago, you joined us and gave us the, the fascinating stories of Harriet Powers and her Bible quilt. And then you did another storybook about children. Martha Ann's Quilt for Queen Victoria. And we really were hanging on every word of yours when you were oh. uh, telling us the stories, the true stories. And now you have another story to tell us about a quilter, this time, as I mentioned, from Indiana. Sure. This is a story of a woman by the name of Estella Weaver Nukes, and she lived in Marion, Indiana during the Depression years. And again, it was one of those um, stories that I happened to see a newspaper headline that said that this woman gave a quilt to the president. And you know me, I had to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Where's the quilt? Why did she do it? And, and try to find out more about her as a quilter. And she made President Roosevelt a postage stamp quilt, which was a pretty common quilt at the time. It is, but my question was, why a postage stamp quilt? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're gonna give a, a quilt gift to the President of the United States, you might do a Baltimore album quilt or something more elaborate. Why a postage stamp quilt? And you found the answer. I did. In this um, book, and the title of the book is called Franklin Roosevelt's Postage Stamp Quilt. I found out two really interesting things. One is that Mrs. Um, Nukes was part of the WPA sewing project. And I had no idea that the WPA even employed women, sure. and particularly to employ women to do sewing. So that was one thing I found out. And the second thing was, I think I uncovered the reason why she may have given the president of the United States a postage stamp quilt. And the reason that I think I found out mm -hmm. was that he was the number one postage stamp collector in the United States during his time in office. How, what a great what a great correlation there! And it was a quilt of gratitude you mentioned. I think so. I, based mm -hmm. on my research, what I was able to find out, and I was able to talk to her grandson, who at the time, believe it or not, was about seven or eight years old when his grandmother was actually stitching the quilt. Mm -hmm. And he lived with his grandparents. From his recollections and other newspaper articles and people in the town of Marion that I spoke with, the WPA sewing project in Marion, Indiana, Mrs. Weaver Nukes was a part of that. And I think what happened is the sewing project and Mrs. Nukes wanted to say thank you to the president for employing them. And in my research, I found out that during the time of the WPA sewing project, which was from about 1935 to 1943, did you know that the sewing project, depending on their location, employed up to 19% of, of all the folks employed by the WPA? Can you imagine that? No, no, I had no clue about that. That's why I you're called either. a quilting sleuth, Kyra. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Well, I mean, what I found amazing um, from the Library of Congress. I also went to the National Archive, which has not only written records, but dozens and dozens and dozens of photographs of uh -huh. these um, sewing room projects with women across the nation in small groups, as well as in these large kind of cafeteria style um, rooms, either hand sewing or mm -hmm. machine sewing. I think Mrs. Nips just really wanted to say thank you for employing her and her friends in Marion, Indiana. And you, you wrote a really charming book about this postage stamp quilt, and so often these stories are forgotten about or they're not even remembered, and you bring them to the forefront. What a, what a great thing you've done. Thank you so much. I find it absolutely fantastic and, and interesting to really uncover and do the family history mm -hmm. as, as well as just regular community history. So thank you. You're welcome, Kyra. Thanks for joining us via Skype, and we hope to talk to you again when you uncover your next project. Thank you, and I'll let you know. Okay, you do that.
Well, and thank you for joining us, those of you at home watching our two-part series on Dahl Fashion Studios with our guest, Joan Hines. We'll be back next time with our second program on this topic and show you more great fashion ideas. If you'd like to watch this program again at nancyzeman.com, you'll watch the program and 52 others online, and you can join us by social media and do all those things that you can connect together. Most of all, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Joan Hines has written a fully illustrated book entitled Dow Fashion Studio that serves as the reference for this two-part series. It's $15.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2622. Order item number V6715, Dow Fashion Studio, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.